We continue to preview the 2023 college football season. Our stop today is Miami Gardens, Florida, where we get to visit with Bill Reichel, who is the head football coach for the St. Thomas Bobcats. Coach, thank you first for stopping by. Let's look back really quickly. A 9-2 season in 2022, a 9-2 season in 2021. Uh, coming off back-to-back -back solid years there, you close out the year with a five-game winning streak as well. Tell us a little bit about last year and even somewhat about the spring too. No, it was, it was a good year for us, something that we're proud of, that we got to keep building on, that we've been 9-2, and two, like you said, for two years straight, lost four games. I think last year uh, the two games we lost were by five points each. So we're, we're right there. We just got to finish it off and, and get it done that I think we're uh, – we were put ourselves in a good position of only having football here for four years and, and everything else to to have those type of seasons uh, on the back end here. And, and the spring was just building off of that. Uh, we, we did. I think our guys did a great job of competing in the spring and getting better. We've had a great off season, a great summer. Uh, the commitment's been great. And our our message has kind of been we've been nine and two for two years in a row. So what are we going to do differently, whether you're a player, a coach, uh, athletic trainer or whoever's involved in our program? What are you going to do differently that wins us the championship that, that our goals are to, to strive for? And you're definitely making those strides toward that in, in your time there as well. I'm just going to leave this out there for anybody who happens to be watching that's on the committee. Nine and two back-to-back -back years, five-game winning streak, one loss to an NAI program, which happened to be the national runner-up last year. I'll just leave that on the table and we may talk about that a little bit more. <laughs> Coach, I, I, one of the biggest names from last season had to be Rontavious Farmer. 1,553 rushing yards, a fantastic season. Second in the country in carries, in rushing yards, in rushing yards per game as well. Does that sound like a good place to start on offense? Absolutely, especially when you're an O-line guy, right? I mean, uh, <laughs> if we can uh, if, if we can win a game by uh, rushing for over 200 yards and and not have any turnovers and no sacks and we win 3 nothing, I I'm fine with it. Uh, but obviously I'm an offensive line guy is kind of how I, I grew up an offensive coordinator as well as uh, uh, Tony Niemeyer, who's our offensive coordinator, works with me. He's also our offensive line coach. And um, even though we're in South Florida now, uh, we're both from up north where the weather starts to change on you a little bit, kind of midseason and everything else. So we firmly believe that you got to run the football in, in order to win and you got to stop the run in order to win. Uh, that's how you win championships. And that's kind of what our offense is built off of. Um, we got some great skilled position players, wide receivers, quarterbacks, all those different areas. But uh, Tay had a fantastic year. Uh, he's demanding of himself. He's demanding of his teammates, really kind of working into his junior year of stepping into more of that leadership role uh, beyond what he, he does from carrying the football for us. But uh, in the regular season there, he led the nation in rushing. And, and obviously he has some some big expectations for himself that, that coincide with us winning hopefully a lot of football games. Another big player on the offensive side of the ball who was able to put up a number of all-purpose yards for you as well, and that's Saquon Nopierre, led your team in receiving yards last year, coming back in 23. Yeah, uh, he's been a fantastic player for us for three years now and, and going into his senior year, and th that's kind of how our offense is built. Uh, we, we really work off of what our players' strengths are. Uh, that kind of dictates what we're going to do. So obviously, like I said, we, we need to run the football in order to win, and we're going to manufacture that and figure that part out. But you, you, you do have to throw the ball a little bit and really kind of hopefully complement uh, both parts of your offense. So he's done a fantastic job with that, does a great job with the ball in his hand after the catch, uh, has done a great job as a returner for us. So I, I know he's excited to, to have a great senior year and accomplish a, a lot of the goals that we have as a team and, and everything that will go along with it. Coming into camp, which is not very far away, quarterback competition, a little bit of competition there. But whoever comes out of that obviously will have some strength in the backfield with Farmer back there as well. So uh, I would think that would have to be a luxury for whoever does come out of that competition. Talk about that. And, and then you mentioned the offensive line as well. Yeah, absolutely. So um, we've been fortunate for the past couple of years since we started the program. He, he came into the program not and didn't start immediately his freshman year, but Tyler Thomas has been our starter the past couple of years. We're actually fortunate enough to keep him on our staff as a, a graduate assistant at this point, but uh, that opens the opportunity for, for somebody else. And we have a couple guys, uh, uh, Tyquan Wiggins, who's been in our program for a few years now is, is in a backup role. He's competing for that position, has had some playing time at different times of the pre previous couple seasons. Uh, and then uh, uh, another 
kind of was a freshman for us that redshirted and and all that type of thing. Uh, Keely O'Brien was done done a great job. I'm not sorry, Keely O'Brien. We're going back to high school days here. Keely Watson is uh, one of our guys that's done a good job and kind of was in that third role, second to third role last year. So we do have some other quarterbacks that will be competing for that, but those were the two guys kind of coming out of the spring. Uh, had some guys that stayed over the summer, some some new guys that are coming in as, as, as freshmen. So it's a wide open competition. And, and for me, um, quarterbacks, uh, obviously, the, I think I'm an offensive line guy and we're going to talk about the offensive line. But quarterback is the most important position in football. If you're not good at quarterback, which coincides with your offensive line, uh, it, it's hard to be good sometimes. So uh, our job is to hope we take some pressure off those guys. And, and our, our goal for them is just manage our offense. Right. Well, you, you mentioned some really good football players, among others that we have coming back here. You, you don't need to be the, the hero All-American right off the bat here to, to help us win football games. You just have to manage what we do and do it well and make some plays. And those guys will help you out getting there. And we've been fortunate with our offensive line that I, I can't tell you what year anybody is anymore because all the covid crap that uh, that we got so many fifth year guys and guys that want to continue here and, and finish what they started at a championship level that. Um, that really sh kind of stands out on our offensive line that we have four guys that are coming back this year, four out of the five that have played a ton of football for us. Uh, Jace Collins was an All-American. Uh, Lucas Rodriguez has played for us for four years. Josh Young is our center that's been there for four years. Jared Noble has been our right tackle for, for four years. So you're, you're talking about guys that have kind of started for five years now that is almost unheard of in, in college football just based on the circumstances that we're in. So uh, we're fortunate to have that, and, and hopefully that can drive that running game that you spoke about and protect our quarterback and make it easier for a new guy kind of working into that position uh, to get where we need to go. Coach, I agree with you. and it's, it's tough to keep up with everyone. And having done this for a while, and as uh, I know both of us have, and, and to look and you think just when you think someone's gone, that's why I'm asking a coach or an SID, oh, they're back again. Okay, well, that's great. So I'm glad that uh, you have that kind of – experience returning specifically as you mentioned there on the offensive line i know that has to go a long way we're here with coach bill reichel on midwest sports net i encourage you please continue to watch the videos and we are enjoying talking about college football heading into 2023 coach the other side of the ball then looking over there nick engler uh 16 tackles for loss and made himself at home in opponents backfields nine sacks as well let's start with the defensive line no and our defensive line uh I think that's why we've developed so well offensively that uh, last year, every single person that started in our defensive line was a first team all conference player. And and just like the O-line, we have a lot of those guys coming back out of those defensive linemen. We lost one. Um, so Nick is kind of a, a big part of that. Khalil, uh, Brian, uh, uh, same type of deal. He started a lot of games for us, kind of that true nose guard position. Uh, Donnell Bennett is kind of the slash player of outside linebacker slash defensive end that's been an all-conference player for three years at defensive line for us. But but Nick is a, a special player. He, he works extremely hard. Um, I'm, I'm glad that from an offensive standpoint and especially from, from an offensive line standpoint that, that he's on our side and we only have to go against him in practice and it's not in games. So uh, we're, we're, I know he's got, again, high expectations, like a lot of these guys has really developed into a leadership role for us as part of our leadership council. So very fortunate to have him coming back. And he's a guy that he's still got another year. He started during the COVID, uh, the COVID mess. So he, he's actually a true senior this year and has some different opportunities. And we'll, we'll see kind of what it takes for him uh, after the season's over. Coach, behind that defensive line and a number of strong players returning for you, including Caleb Walker. Tell us a little bit about your linebacking core and the, and the secondary. No, and again, we're we're fortunate with these fifth years and guys that we've gotten some playing time for that we, we have some pretty good depth that we have to continue to develop. But Caleb has played quite a bit uh, in, in our defensive backfield with some other great players. Uh, Ja'Cory Austin's the other corner that's um, had a fantastic career that's coming back for a fifth year. has been an all-conference player for us. So there's going to be a, some really good competition, especially with the new guys we're bringing in uh, at, at those spots. And linebackers kind of no different that they uh, – we got Jordan Lynch that's coming back and some other guys uh, to kind of compete with Colin Fadden and guys are moving around a little bit from the inside position. Um, but excited for our defense and what they can put out there, that they played fantastic last year and, and helped us win a lot of those football games over the cornerstone of some of that stuff. Um, so we have a lot of good players there that I think uh, can continue to contribute and a lot of good competition. They'll go into it to see how it all shakes out before we before we start the season. 
I talked about Nopier having a, a number of all-purpose yards for you as he was able to uh, be a, a strong part of your return team. Look at special teams. Alejandro Prado, last season, 12 for 16 field goals. That's pretty solid. 46 of 47 in point after attempts and and this was an offense that was scoring pretty regularly so to have someone automatic like that i'm sure is is very nice for you yeah absolutely uh, absolutely uh ollie's done a great job uh, obviously as a freshman he's an all-conference player same thing as a sophomore uh, i think there's even more high expectations for him i i get uh, I, I have to hold him back sometimes because i'm pretty conservative on the field goal stuff of uh, I think we can score all the time on offense, so why are we going to try a real long field goal or something like that? But he has the leg to do it. Uh, I think he's put himself even in a better position coming into this year that he's worked. Uh, obviously, those kickers, they shy away from the weight room sometimes and have a little bit different mentality about it. Uh, but he, he he's kind of realizes the potential of our strength and conditioning program and what that can have on his kicking. Obviously you have to have the accuracy and everything else that he's done a really good job with, but to, to continue to help his kickoffs and his punts and see how some of those positions shake out that we've separated those roles in the past for us with kicking and punting and things like that. Um, but now with our, our former punter, Braden uh, graduating, um, we'll see if he takes it all on or what what's best for him and best for the team to, to have the most success. Um, but he's he's ready, I think, up for the challenge, however that shakes out. Okay, Coach, we talked about camp. There will be some competition for that quarterback spot. Camp's not that far away right now. And then you get to the regular season, and I think this is one of the most interesting schedules throughout the NAIA, so let's look at it really quickly. And I don't often go through the entire schedule. I won't, but let's go a little bit deeper than, than normal here. You start off August 26th against – Fort Lauderdale, you get the Eagles at home, and then it is five consecutive games on the road after that. September 2nd at Division I, Stetson. September 9th at Carroll, you cross the Mississippi for the first time in school history and, and go out there at, at uh, a program that in the past quarter of a century has been NAI football royalty. I, I, I mentioned actually on another earlier video, they have more championships than you all have seasons played, including this year. So uh, that's a that's going to be an interesting game. You get a week off, then you head to Fort Worth against Texas Wesleyan on the 23rd of September, and then Sun Conference uh, play after that on the 30th at Weber, after that on October 7th at Kaiser, again, the defending national runners up. And then, hey, October 14th, all the way from August 26th to October 14th, you finally come back and play at home a conference game against Florida Memorial. Talk about that. I, I know I talked quite a bit, Coach. Normally, I want to give you more time, but I want to set that up for you and let you talk about it a little bit. Well, th there's a lot that went into this, and is it? It's a, a, a perfect madness. So, um, just based on how our conference schedule shook out this year, our first conference home game, like you mentioned, was until October 14th. Um, we we had set up prior previously the game with Stetson, so had that on the schedule, and then kind of had to fill everything else out. And uh, a couple reasons here. So, um, w without getting into uh, I guess jumping on my soapbox like I've done in the past and things like that. Um, we're a year going into year five football program, and it's extremely hard for anybody to come want to play us here in South Florida. Uh, hard for me to find home games. I understand there are some budget concerns and things like that, but at the same time, we're 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 going into our fifth year of football. We've had some good success, but we're we're trying to play great opponents and we're trying to attract great opponents to come down here to play us. So uh, we're we're open to helping with some of that travel and doing whatever we have to do to to get people to come to South Florida and uh, to to play in beautiful Miami. Um, at the same time, then when you look at the schedule, I, I did this last year's schedule as well when we went up to St. Xavier. That I re I, the playoffs are expanded and everything else, but uh, we had a really good football team last year that didn't get in at nine and two. And uh, if you look at the people that were playing, uh, there's an automatic bid in Montana that they received and got in kind of right behind us if you put any worth into the rankings. And I think Texas Wesleyan was, was very similar to us, that they had just as good an argument as we did as, as to why we should have been a playoff team. Uh, so when I'm looking at who has open dates and who we can play and who can help us with our resume, or at the very least, we're going to have a fantastic football game, right? So it, it was looking at if we're fortunate enough to go out there and, and play the capable the way we're capable of playing, I wanted to play those great teams uh, to to have that opportunity for our guys to to make a name for themselves to to get into the playoffs and uh, uh, at the same time play good competition because our our conference is extremely strong. Um, it's week in and week out. We've got some really good teams. Uh, if you don't come to play, I don't care if it's the 
supposed top team in our conference or the last team, it, it's going to be a tough go. So having that strong schedule at the beginning of the season, I think, helps prepare us uh, from the mindset you need and the physicality and the, the execution and everything involved in winning a football game. I think that helps us once we get into conference play. So it'll be tough. I was lucky enough to get that week zero game in because I, I think our administration and all the people on campus that love the tailgates and the parties and everything else, if our first home game wasn't until October 14th, uh, <laughs> I, I might not still be the head football coach and athletic director, but at, at the same time, they understand it. But it, we wanted to get that game in early, even though we don't return for quite a while, just to, to, to get the campus involved, that they're excited for football season. They're excited for fall athletics to, to kind of show off a little bit and um, ha have them have an experience from outside the field of, of the everything that football and, and college athletics brings to a campus, especially at the start of the school year. Well, the good news for the fans, too, I mean, you still have five home games on the schedule, obviously, that you get that one week zero game in there. And the, the regular season concludes, and, and hopefully for you all this season, a, a postseason opportunity, the regular season concludes four of the last five games are at home. So hopefully they will get that tailgating fix in. Uh, they'll be able to do it. And and at that point in the season, it, it has to be a little bit cooler outside, too. So that's uh, that's going to be a nice thing, too. No, absolutely. Like you, you talk about the last four games at home. I'm from Cleveland originally, so you don't know if you're plowing snow or what, what you got, what, what you kind of have to deal with in some of those end of the year football games and going into the playoffs. Um, but here it's much more manageable. It's enjoyable. We put on a good homecoming with fireworks and everything. And it, it, we play that game at night. So um, for sure, you're not dealing with the brutal heat in August to try to sit, sit out there on a, uh, Saturday, August afternoon or something and worrying about when that's going to pop on a thunderstorm or something like that. So it's the best weather around uh, is kind of that end of the football season through uh, through February or so. Well, Coach, we do look forward to to seeing the Bobcats this season and not only the home schedule, uh, the Sun Conference schedule, which you, you mentioned is challenging in and of itself. A couple of big intersectional NAI games that, that should be fun to talk about into in the month of September. Coach Bill Reichel, thank you so much for taking time to preview the Bobcats for 2023. We'll follow along and we just appreciate you having being having some time and being with us on the channel today. No, I appreciate it. I appreciate what you do for, for small college football. It's fantastic. I've I've coached it. I've lived it. And and uh, appreciate you kind of giving us the opportunity to show what our school and our guys are, are doing down here in Miami. Thank you, Coach.